Hi and welcome to the 2018 Ericsson OSS BSS US Group. I'm Des Blanchfield and I'm here in New York and I have the pleasure of being joined by my dear friend Neil Lilly. Hi Neil, how are you? Great Des, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for catching up with me again. It's a pleasure. It's good to be here and meet customers and uh, colleagues. It's an exciting event and we're going to get into the event itself uh, in a moment. Um, you're the head of marketing for uh, analytics and assurance inside uh, Ericsson. Could you maybe just give us a, a summary of kind of what that role actually covers? What's your remit? Sure, so it's part of our OSS portfolio, uh, focusing on understanding the customer experience, understanding network performance, bringing all that together and being part of a solution to, to deliver you know, better uh, experience yep. and uh, better results. Fantastic, now I'd like to dive into that in a bit more in a minute, uh, but as we mentioned, uh, we are here in New York at the uh, 2018 uh, Ericsson OSS BSS uh, user group. There's something like 61 different uh, carriers and operators under one roof. I understand that's the first time that's actually been uh, done and successfully. And the general theme seems to be uh, cooperation, uh, co-creation, collaboration as opposed to competition. Um, love to get your thoughts and insights on the, the last couple of days and, and what you've just generally heard on the floor and what the sense of the event is. Yeah, it was really interesting to get some of the operator perspectives about evolving ecosystems and what they see is going to be necessary in a 5G world to deliver to their customers, their enterprise customers, their potential new partners. They need to work together and they need ways of managing their operations smoothly and effectively, more nimbly, so that they can deliver to those enterprise customers and other new kinds of customers uh, in partnership with other operators when they need to provide a, a broader solution or broader coverage. I've had some really great conversations over the last two days uh, that really surprised me from, from you know, so many nations, from so many different carriers and business types and also uh, different market sectors. Uh, there's just this really neat buzz about people getting excited about the fact that they can actually play together finally when they've been competitors for a while. Um, and I guess uh, what you're doing with uh, the, 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 I guess the, you know, the cloudification and the virtualization of uh, the uh, two different platforms of OSS, BSS, so uh, you know, operational systems support and the business system support, uh, the blending of the two platforms, shifting it into an open stack, containerized, dockerized space we can instantiate right. in minutes, as uh, Matt Scarlson says, not months anymore. Uh, I think I quoted him once, he said it used to take like eight months to build something that came down to eight weeks and eight right. days, now it's eight minutes. Um, people will be able to take ideas, use cases that they hadn't necessarily been able to solve before and tackle them. Mm -hmm. There's an exciting uh, announcement that came out the other day with regard to Ericsson's acquisition of Cynix. Um, That's right, yeah. Uh, maybe just, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what that actually means and maybe just cover it briefly for our viewers and uh, so they can understand it. I've got a couple of questions around that space if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, so Cynix is uh, a nice fit to uh, uh, round out the OSS portfolio, focused on assurance, assuring the network. Uh, it's a very much an end-to-end -end view of the network, very much topology aware, uh, rich and detailed information about mm -hmm. how the network works, how it fits together. Uh, and then uh, analytics, artificial intelligence on top of that to understand uh, really quickly what, what are root causes when something's right. happening in the network from a fault or performance issue, uh, what's going on, what is the real cause, sort through the alarms much faster way beyond what a traditional you know, fault management or performance management system is able to do. And you've been doing business with them for some time. I, mean, I, I think someone mentioned it was almost a decade or so that you've been doing business with them uh, in various forms. And uh, I think it's a very natural acquisition for the organization to, uh, I guess, you know, close the loop in many ways and some of the capabilities you've been looking to, to bridge into anyway, isn't it? Well, that's right. We've worked with them as part of our overall dynamic orchestration solution. Dynamic orchestration is Ericsson's way of delivering closed loop automation right. uh, in, in network management and in the OSS space in general. It includes inventory, it includes all sorts of actual uh, execution around orchestration, it includes analytics and assurance. So Cenex is a nice part of the uh, inbound part of that, the uh, monitoring, identifying, decision making part of that, that then the or orchestration uh, functions can then act on in order to you know, resolve whatever may be uh, affecting the network and affecting customers. How do you see the uh, integration of what your world's been uh, till recently uh, with regard to the expert analytics that you've been doing sure. inside Ericsson uh, uh, now with the integration of what Cynix brings to the table? I mean, you've been working with them some time in various forms. Now they're part of the family. What's that integration going to look like? And I guess what key benefits can uh, enterprise consumers more than any look forward to benefiting from sure. this acquisition? 
Yeah, so <clears throat> expert analytics has got um, a lot now of traction, a lot of market momentum. It's great to be here at a user group with so many current users of expert analytics, and that's one, a real success story uh, for us and, and for the customers using the system. And that continues and grows now. This is really a, you know, kind of a breakout and growth time uh, yeah. for expert analytics. Uh, where we're focused on there continues to be customer experience and uh, subscriber level view of experience, subscriber level view of symptoms, root causes, and next best actions. And that fits nicely with Senex, right? So expert analytics is extremely aware of what is affecting individual customers or groups of customers and covers a whole um, broad domain of root causes, things like coverage in network fallback, subscription issues, device right. issues, in addition to the fault performance kinds of problems that, that might occur. Uh, and then Senex, uh, is really able to augment our root cause diagnosis by looking directly at uh, all the different parts of the network and identifying exactly what's overloaded, exactly what is, is malfunction, uh, and, and enhance the root cause analysis on, on that category of problems. Okay. Uh, and likewise, with uh, Senex, we can take uh, a, a, an anomaly that they've detected and with expert analytics then do an impact analysis mm -hmm. and understand exactly who's affected by this. Helps with prioritization, uh, helps with the different kinds of things you might do to resolve the issue on the customer side. So uh, they actually work together uh, quite well. It is, is, and I think we're going to see some uh, interesting use cases for both of the platforms integrated that uh, customers will actually start asking you to solve problems and you'll be able to say, well, now we've got these two components together. Expert That's Analytics right. has been able to do this much. Right. Senex is about to do this. Now we bolt them at the hip, as it were. Uh, we get a, a broader view. And I guess you know, eventually we'll end up with organizations with uh, bimodal data lakes, their own data lakes, access to the data lakes to provide as a service by yourselves as a right. telco as a service. That give them broader and deeper uh, insights as well. Really keen to get your thoughts on the transition. I mean, there's some really big trends coming along, and there's a right. couple we want to talk about. I mean, around 5G in particular, autonomous vehicles, industrial mm -hmm. internet of things. Um, but in your world, the shift from uh, historical analytics to real-time stream analytics to predictive. Right. Um, where do you see the big shifts coming around, uh, leveraging that predictive analytics, and particularly the, the big disruptive uh, trends that are coming about in, in the world with regard to 5G? That's right, so I mean, some of the trends that we're seeing for our operator customers, of course, 5G is driving so much now. All the new dis different kinds of use cases that you mentioned, uh, but also the IoT use cases we've been looking at for a while are going to come out of 5G. Right. Uh, and uh, that's partly where this ecosystem comes in, again, where we're doing network as a service yeah. for enterprise customers, for instance, and where uh, the kinds of you know reliable, uh, flexible, easy to, to spin up services that enterprise customers want have to be provided uh, on a, a nationwide footprint or a continental or worldwide yeah, footprint yeah. Uh, with operators working together. And so you know, analytics and assurance are a part of the solution to that to get to that closed loop automation mm -hmm. for those advanced 5G use cases and those hybrid networks. And then some of the other things we're seeing uh, is, is, as you mentioned, integrating uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning into those solutions. We have uh, uh, projects and alliances going on with universities and other third parties around the world, getting the right kind of data science involved early in the process. Setting up now, we have uh, what we call the, the machine intelligence environment, okay. where we're uh, analyzing uh, all different sorts of data, coming up with new rules and new insights, which we then industrialize into products like Senex and Expert mm -hmm. Analytics mm -hmm. to uh, make available to all of our customers. So we've seen a trend around uh, power and utilities, for example, where they have uh, uh, platforms like uh, asset management for poles and wires, they have vegetation management for uh, tracking where hedges and shrubs and trees grow into those wires and create fires and risks. Uh, in the telco space now, you've obviously had uh, expert analytics and, and now you've got Cynics there where you're, you've shifted from historical to real time to predictive analytics. It seems to me that now with uh, what you're able to do inside Ericsson, what your operator and carrier partners can offer, enterprise customers can now start doing really smart things with, you know, like ent enterprise mobility, uh, uh, you know, fixed wireless access versus m mobile users. Right. Um, what does this mean to people? Uh, what sort of use cases can they start thinking about and leveraging this now that they can almost predict the future of what the uses 
patterns are going to be around, the, the risks and issues, you know, using other data sources, you said, right. you know, whether it's weather mm -hmm. data, traffic data, seasonal holiday, uh, whatever the case may be, where does that take us? Yeah, you, you can predict a, a future, actually, where we're bringing in data from almost anywhere, right. uh, depending on the business models that uh, operators and their enterprise customers come up with. And that's part of the, the strength of having uh, uh, the data science alliances and the, the machine intelligence environment that we've created. Uh, you know, we're finding that um, uh, you know, operators are still working out all of the different kinds of 5G use cases yes. they're going to emphasize. Yeah. And as they do that, they need to be in a position to quickly act as those you know, blossom and, and begin to become apparent so that they can uh, operationalize those things quickly. Yeah, I am um, watching the trend around, uh, you know, we've seen this whole shift in enterprise around data-driven decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we see uh, tablets ending in the boardroom now, not just receiving email, but live dashboards. Right. Um, is this something we're seeing now in the, what, what I could sort of consider the telco as a service that you're now offering across all the spaces in your world around that, uh, I guess, uh, analytics and insurance mm -hmm. uh, versus the operational and, and, and the BSS space. Are we seeing a situation now where you're able to provide that uh, data-driven decision making in real time for all of the stack, all the way from sort of, you know, the operators through to the enterprise clients and the potentially even the, the end consumers or prosumers as to time of the day, pricing, I mean, what does that even look like? Yeah, so more and more um, analytics as a service is something that we're able to, to provide uh, and uh, growing that out on a case-by-case -case basis uh, and then enabling the operators, our clients, to do provide that to their end customer. Right. Uh, it, it, Data-driven is absolutely where it's at. Uh, data about customer experience, about customer behavior, customer preference, um, uh, and making that part of real-time decision-making. That is absolutely what we're, we've been doing and are continuing to do. That's an exciting time. Well, I definitely look forward to seeing uh, not just what yourself and your team are doing uh, around the expert analytics, but I really look forward to seeing what you're doing with the partnership with uh, Cenex. Um, and I'm uh, definitely looking forward to a couple of the uh, sessions and the rest of the afternoon of this event. Uh, and uh, it was interesting to get some comments from folk from last year where it was an exciting event, but uh, a very different feel from this year where it's a lot more collaborative. And uh, I think we're looking for a very bright future with what's uh, at people's fingertips, both as the operators and the carriers, but also the consumers. Um, do you get a sense that the consumers now are feeling that vibe, the feeling that use cases and concepts that they, they may not have been able to do before are becoming possible? Is that something that's out in the street? Yeah, and their expectations have really risen, right? right. We've done a Consumer Labs report earlier this year that indicated that consumers are now uh, used to easy, zero-touch, customizable, uh, smooth uh, experiences from all sorts of uh, industries through their mobile device, for instance. Yeah. And they're expecting the operators themselves to deliver that same kind of smooth end-to-end -end device uh, experience. If you were to, uh, you know, sort of future gaze for a moment, uh, where do you see this taking the next 12 to 18 months? What, when an enterprise client that uh, would normally come to you and ask you to be putting things in racks and servers and switches and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, this whole software focus capability, the, the CICD approach to sort of DevOps, fail, fail fast, you've been used to it in your world, uh, the infrastructure provider is getting used to it now, do you have a general sense of where that's going to take us? Uh, I mean, you know, we, we hear interoperability, uh, lower TCO, lower time to market. Mm -hmm. What's your general sense of where we're going to be in a year and a half uh, with what you're now offering from inside Ericsson, both within your group and, and the right. organization as a whole? This could be a lot of collaboration with operators and Ericsson. Uh, the idea is to really have a much more complete, holistic, integrated end-to-end -end mm -hmm. solution in OSS, for instance. Uh, and that really enables orchestration and SDN, NFV, and so on uh, to make those uh, goals and visions realized, right? The amount of uh, integration of capability, integration of data, yep. in, and integration of effort between the operators and uh, providers like Ericsson. Well, it's a very bright future. Uh, Neil Lilly, uh, Head of Marketing for uh, Analytics and Assurance, thank you so much for joining me on camera yet again. And it's a Great to see you in person. My uh, pleasure. We've had some great uh, catch-ups at different events and even a couple of great podcasts. I look forward to getting you back on the show again, but great to see you. Congratulations on a very successful event and certainly the, uh, the bringing of so many uh, unique characters under one roof and having them all talk to each other and not uh, go to war. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, I think we've got a very bright future both uh, for yourselves as Ericsson and the operators and, and carriers you've got as partners, but also uh, from my point of view as the uh, enterprise consumer of those services, I think it's, you know, 
we're looking to a very fun, bright future ahead of us. No doubt. It's been fun. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. And folks, with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm Des Blanchfield, and we're here at the 2018 Ericsson OSS BSS User Group in New York. Have a great day.